And we are live. <laughs> hey, Jenna, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Good. Hey, everyone. Um, looks like we got a crew who's joined us. Hey, Tamar, how you doing? Um, and Brianna Ross, I believe is her name. Good to see you, Brianna. Um, and everybody else is watching. Thanks for tuning in. As you can see, I have a special guest here today, Jenna Eli. Jenna, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Jenna, also known as Whiskey A Go Girl on Instagram. And I became a whiskey nerd, I guess, about a little over two years ago um, when my husband was bringing home all these whiskeys and I was turning my nose up at them because I had had a bad experience in my youth and thought all the whiskey tastes the same and I had to mix it with a Coke and I didn't want it in my house taking up room. And one night he was drinking Macallan 18 with a big smile on his face. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna taste it. And I tasted it and that was it for me. So I jumped down the rabbit hole and I've been following ever since. And I'm just trying to learn as much as I can, um, drink as many different whiskeys as I can and really understand what makes this liquid gold so special to all of us. So I'm just here to learn and to share what I'm learning. And yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I remember Jenna, like last year, so just related to the Scotch Mall Whiskey Society, obviously, you know, I'm here representing, you're yep. kind enough to join us as a guest and, and talk about it with me. But I remember last year you were at an event, I think in LA, and I was trying to, I, you know, I wasn't working for the company at the time, but just as yeah. a fan. I was. I remember texting you. Uh, <laughs> I had just volunteered to help at an event in Chicago, and the same event was in LA, I believe. And I was texting you, trying to convince you to join. It's like my biggest accomplishment of the week was getting encouraging Jenna to join. But I remember you were talking about like the whiskeys that were available there um, and whatnot. But yeah, was, uh, I don't. I don't remember which ones they had, but. Being, becoming a member was something that I have been thinking about for quite some time, and I just didn't know enough about it. Um, I didn't really know how it worked or, you know, what type of whiskeys I was going to be getting. Um, and I was still really new into whiskey. Um, and so you were the one who kind of really broke everything down for me and really explained everything for me. And it was whiskey, it was extravaganza, whiskey extravaganza here in L.A. And I was like, you know what, we're doing it. And I'm so happy <laughs> that I did it because now I'm... I mean, I love cast strength whiskeys and these to be single cask are really special and I'm, I'm a happy member of the society and being able to really explore all of these amazing single cask whiskeys. Yeah, and so I want, I think obviously, as you guys know, we've been announcing this quite a bit on Instagram um, and also through email for all society members who receives our emails. Um, We've been announcing this, and we're doing something a little bit different than we've done in terms of light tastings in the past. But just to take a quick, quick step back, um, we have some really exciting whiskeys that just came out today. Uh, we've hand-selected three of them that I'm really, really excited to talk about. I am, too. <laughs> we're lucky enough, we were both out in Las Vegas just a couple of weeks ago for the Scotch and Time event. Had a chance to pour those. I, I We each tasted those, I think, once. Had some initial impressions, but I'm really excited to dive back into them. But I think at the core, as you guys can tell from the title below, uh, you, you know, as a society, we're a community of whiskey lovers. You know, we're different than any really whiskey brand. A lot of what we do in terms of, you know, the decisions regarding the, the whiskeys to release, uh, events we do, a lot of it is based on member feedback. So it's pretty much whatever our fellow whiskey lovers want. We, we try our best to, to get to them. And, you know, within this you know, day to day operation society, we're always talking to our members. And a lot of people just have a lot of questions. Sometimes, you know, when it comes to learning about whiskey or appreciating whiskey, you can't, I don't know, Janet, maybe you've had this experience too, but when I first got into it, I felt like it could be somewhat intimidating. Sometimes oh, you for sure. That, that was one of my biggest, I guess, issues when I first got into it because I didn't know the terminology. I couldn't tell you how to make a whiskey. I didn't know the difference between whiskey with an E or without or a bourbon versus a rye. I... I didn't know any of that stuff. I just knew that I liked it and I wanted to know why. Um, and over the almost two and a half years that I've been kind of digging into this, the thing that I've learned is you don't have to know any of that stuff to enjoy it. And um, whiskey is for everyone. There's no right or wrong way to whiskey. Um, there are, I believe that there is a whiskey for everyone. 
Um, and I, I think the words, ooh, I won't drink that are some of my favorite words to hear because I'm like on a mission to convert people to actually really loving whiskey. Um, but I think that whiskey should just be approachable for everyone. And whether you want to become an enthusiast and learn and really dig deep into these, or maybe you just want to come home at the end of the day and pour a good scotch or a good bourbon in your glass because you enjoy it. That's okay too. There's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And I wish I had known that in the beginning, um, because I was scared. I was scared to talk about it. I was scared to go to the store and pick one out. And now that I now know that it's really no right or wrong way, it's reckless abandon now. I've gone crazy. <laughs> and that's a great point. And, and to that, like Jenna and everybody watching, um, you know, we get a lot of questions from members. And a lot of times I, you can tell that some of our members just, we, we all want to know everything about whiskey, but we sure. have a great learning process. And I think, you know, really we're always learning, but you know, with this live tasting tonight and with everyone moving forward, in addition to debuting our newest cast the day or the day before the release, we also want to tackle some key questions and issues uh, regarding whiskey with the objective that all society members and everyone just tuning in can walk away having learned something. Um, and as you know, to Jenna's point, you know, you know, when it comes to experiencing whiskey, discovering it, there, there really is no one way. And so the title below is how to taste whiskey like a pro. We are going to, you know, the two of us are going to tackle some of those, some tips and tricks to really help you, you know, on your discovery of whiskey and help, help you learn how to appreciate it. Um, but really, I think the fundamentally, the, the distinction to be made is that there is no one way to do it. We want to kind of arm you with our own really kind of personal approach. And from there, you know, take what you like, at, you know, by all means in the comments, throw out your own ideas. If you disagree or agree with us, please, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but it's going to be fun. And it's it's going to be hopefully educational. You'll learn something. Um, but feel free to chime in in the comments. So before we get going, Jenna, anything else you want to? Um, I think I just want to throw out a little piece of advice. When I first got into whiskey, um, I listened to Heather Green's Whiskey Distilled. And anytime anyone starts to get into whiskey, I always recommend listening to, I listen to it on audiobook, but it's like in print form too. So if you like the feel of a, of a book, you can read it too. But she has this just really beautiful approach to kind of guiding you on how to discover your nose and palate. And so that would be my recommendation <laughs> to, to everyone. If you have not read her book, yeah. go read it. <laughs> Yeah, she's great. There are a lot of great sources out there. And I think you'll get after this session here, you'll, you'll realize again, not to be redundant, but there are, you know, there's no one way to approach it. Um, but this is going to be fun. So yeah, I'm ready. Let's do well, it. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're going to, in a little bit, viewing the three different whiskeys that came out today. We'll be tasting those. Uh, but first, the first whiskey we're going to start with is kind of like our, our, our demo is cast 7.184. Which I'm going to hold this up to those people that want. 7.184 was released here in the United States, in our branch here, uh, back in March as part of our digital outturn. It's still available, which I don't know why it's still available. It's one of my favorite casts we've had so far. And I'll hold this up. I know it's in reverse, but 7.184 is called Handbags and Hookahs. It's a 12 year old space side. I distilled on the 7th of September, 2004, matured in the first fill bourbon barrel. So, you know, we're going to go into this kind of tips and tricks of how to, to nose and taste whiskey, but really to start, maybe we should start with the bottle itself. Um, any, any thoughts? I mean, obviously we should probably talk about the cast strength nature. Do you want to jump in and kind of share your thoughts on cast strength or how to approach cast strength whiskey? Um, so at first cast strength whiskey for me was, it was too hot and too abrasive. And I think I coughed actually the first time I had an actual good cast strength whiskey. Um, this sits at 61%. So it's on the higher side. I've read lots of studies and opinions from people who say, well, if it's over 50%, you're going to want to add a little bit of water. Um, for me personally, I don't add water to this. Um, I have my, my palate has somewhat acclimated to cask strength. Um, I feel like there are more layers of flavor um, in a cast strength whiskey. It has not been diluted. It has, there's no water added. It is just like putting a straw in a barrel. 
And uh, <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> um, so for everyone, it, it's, again, everyone's different. Some people may need to add water. Um, if you do add water, I would recommend with just starting with a drop and tasting. And if it's still a little too much, then you can go and add another. Um, for me personally, like I said, I, I don't add water to this because I think that I like kind of diving really deep into these whiskeys to explore all of the, the flavors that are in the cask. Um, so I, do you add water to your cast drink whiskey or how do you do it? You know, like this one particularly is bottled at 61.0%. I know there are a lot of really experienced whiskey drinkers here in this chat. Um, I'm just kind of I'd be curious to know how people, you know, people who do add water, how do you gauge? Do you, if it is over 50%, do you add water? Um, do you do it just on a personal preference? Or I'd like to know what other people do. Yeah. And, and as you guys are kind of commenting below, you know, I think my own opinion on that is like ultimately, yeah, I've learned, I think, from horse looning back in the day, alcohol is in fact a neurotoxin. Like you have to be mindful of that. And and sometimes if you taste whiskey that's too strong and, and too high in ABV, it can actually paralyze your taste buds and limit mm -hmm. your taste whiskey. So, you know, I think as we go into this and just make a quick distinction, obviously there's a difference between tasting whiskey and drinking whiskey. Um, a lot of people like to tell the people how to drink whiskey. I think as you're gauging from what we're saying so far, we're not <laughs> telling you how to taste whiskey, excuse me, we're not going to be telling you how to drink whiskey, but no. most of tasting whiskey, if you want to really experience the full flavor and aromatic potential of the spirit, there's some things to keep in mind. And sometimes when the alcohol is too high, it really masks, I think, the, the flavors and aromas that are really contained within the whiskey itself. Um, so in this case, 61%, like, you know, let's just start looking in the glass right away. Color can tell you a lot of things or can tell you nothing. Um, all of these whiskeys are naturally colored, which is a great place to start. A lot of the whiskeys on the market that you'll see at the store are actually artificially colored, unfortunately, and will also be diluted to commercial drinking strength. So you know, when we're looking at naturally colored whiskey right here, this color is a, a pale gold, I would say. Yeah. Or, you know, what, I mean, this suggests, you know, really what, what it is, which is American oak. Um, in this case, we know it, it is on the label itself. This is a first fill ex bourbon. Okay. Um, but just, you know, to kind of observe an observation I like to look at is, is check the legs, as you refer to. A lot of people will swirl the whiskey like wine. What do you, I mean, what's your approach to swirling whiskey? Are you a swirler? Or you... It depends on what glassware I'm using. So for this this whiskey, I've had numerous times, and so I feel familiar with it. Um, usually when I have a whiskey for the first time, I have some kind of, I either put it in like a Copita or a Glencairn or something um, similar in shape, but I love the feeling of a rocks glass or just a tumbler. I love the way it feels in my hand, and this is, nine out of ten times what i typically go for when i drink whiskey um if it's something that i've had and i'm not really trying to dissect what i'm drinking uh so this is something that i go for all the time but if i'm in a glencairn or a copita i do a swirl and i like to see how leggy or how chewy it's going to be but today this one gets a good old fashioned rocks glass. <laughs> <laughs> Broken gold under one, which is a proper glass. Work. No, no, I think that's a good. Yeah, but you, you do big swirls though. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people will talk about. You'll hear this. You get the tips and tricks. You know, fail number one is, is really calling the fact that yes, a lot of people will, will properly say that you shouldn't swirl whiskey like a wine because, okay. um, as a Scotsman once told me that you know the Scotsmen are already agitated. There's no reason to further agitate a so um, really the alcohol is so high that, you know, or it's lower in wine, it's going to swirl wine to really just boost the aromatic, you know, experience of uh, whiskey. As strong as it is, you don't really need to swirl it. That's kind of a habit. I like seeing it in the glass a little bit. I like, yes, I like the habit of it and the motion of it. It's, it's kind of second nature now, you know, when you put it in your hand, you just do a little, just a little swirl. But you, you got big ones. Yes, I mean, obviously, you know, when we start with the, the whiskey tasting experience, you, you pour it in the glass, you choose a glass for your choice. You know, some glasses, as Jenna mentioned, are, are, are more effective than others. Others are just more comfortable. It's, it's really a personal preference. Um, you know, I think fluid dynamics is something to consider if you really want to get into it. Like we have different glasses for wine. There are also different whiskeys, different styles of whiskeys that work better with different glasses. But generally, you know, 
I do keep, this is our society tasting glass you know, with this curved shape. I do find this to be the most effective. Um, other people disagree with that. So. Yeah, I think it, again, it's it's what you're comfortable with. You you know your nose and palate better than anyone. So if you get better notes out of a glass like this or you know, out of Glencairn or something similar to what you have, just go with what you're comfortable with. That's a good place to start. So I think properly, I mean, if you gently just roll the spirit around in the glass, this will tell you a couple of things. This will tell you really the alcohol content. I mean, the thickness of the legs itself, um, and as well as the speed in which these legs are running will tell you a lot about the whiskey. We're going to try to keep this, obviously, be mindful of time, not to go too in-depth, because I think we can really go down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> uh, but you know, after initial observations of the whiskey itself, you, know, you come to the stage where that I personally think is most important. Um, Again, others might disagree, but for me, nosing the whiskey is really, you know, for me, the best way to identify, discern what it's what it is. Um, and being that, you know, the nose is the strongest sensory organ in the body, I find that it, it really triggers memories of, of just past experiences, which helps me really place that whiskey in my mind um, and get to really appreciate it. Yeah, that's exactly what I do when I know something. I, I just pull up that Rolodex of memories and I I will roll the whiskey on my face. I will swirl it around my nose. I will hold it. Um, I'll try one nostril, then I'll try the other. I will just kind of place it all around my face to see if I'm missing anything or to see where I'm pulling out certain notes. Um, and then I just go through that Rolodex of memories and say, oh, this reminds me of Christmas at grandma's house or um, that one time I went on that date and ate this. There, there are so many things that, you know, you, you have this huge bank of memories and there's so many places to place the whiskey. So was the date as good as this whiskey? Well, it was with the whiskey fairy. So. All right, okay. So, <laughs> okay. so almost as good as the whiskey then. Um, okay, so just jumping into it. So obviously different techniques for nosing. I would just, I, one thing, you know, I, I would add, and I like to tell people a lot, is the first time you nose a whiskey, it's going to be a very different experience than the second and third time. Particularly the difference between the first and two, I think are the most profound. The first time, usually your body will just kind of, for me at least, shock. You will go off and say, alcohol, alcohol, you know, it's poison. <laughs> If you're stepping away for a few seconds and revisiting, I find it's much easier the second time to really cut into the whiskey and start picking up those aromas within the spirit. Um, but with that said, let, let's let's talk about this whiskey. So 7.184 handbags and hookahs and 12-year-old Speyside whiskey for those of you just joining us. It's currently available. This is one of only 187 bottles uh, in the world, and there are much fewer than that uh, available today. But what, what are you picking up on this, Just and what are you looking for? Those bourbon notes are right there to greet you at the door. You get those vanillas, those brown sugars. It's heavy. For me, it's a, it's a heavy bourbon forward whiskey. I mean, on the nose. Yeah. Then, I don't know. I've sat with this quite a few times, and it always ends up reminding me of, like, it's like bourbon, and then it finishes on, like, flaky cooked pastry crust. Yeah. Like, crust of a fresh hot apple pie yeah i get that like i get like the apple pie element i mean this is in our it's we've categorized this in one of our 12 flavor profiles this one's in the spicy and dry flavor profile and i think it's that's that's nailed it because i for me i get this really strong note of like dried ginger i am Chinese mean, five spice but to me it's like got all of those classic notes that you would expect from american oak matured space like whiskey yeah. which is and orchard fruits, just drizzle and honey, really creamy vanilla, um, a bit of toffee. Um, for me, just again, that kind of a classic, classic space side in American oak. I would agree. Yes, it's uh, it makes me want to bake an apple pie. So in terms of, okay, so that's the nose. And obviously, as you guys can tell, for those of you who are new to whiskey, Jen and I are picking up different notes. Um, again, and that's good and that's okay and that's that is part of the great conversation you know having whiskey with people and, and comparing what each of you kind of take away from it is really the exciting part and i love doing that i love sitting down with people and hearing what they have to say and hearing what their nose pulls out you know versus what what mine pulls out so it's um that's kind of one of the beauties of this <laughs> so what's your approach to tasting like do you have any rules or do you have like a 
So what, what I typically do is I will take a sip and then I will keep it in my mouth for a few seconds um, before I swallow it. I just won't drink it like I would drink water or, you know, Kool-Aid. Um, I let it sit on my tongue for a little bit. Sometimes I'll do a little swish depending kind of how I'm feeling and then I'll swallow it and just let it just soak my palate. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. I was not <laughs> at all. I, you were doing that. You're talking about tasting and I already, already tasted it. That was, that was a fail. And this one's really good. So I'm not going to uh, jump out of line again, but overall, you know, 61%. Let's go back to that point about just strength and adding water. So we're tasting this neat 61% for me. It's a bit hot. It's, it's very tantalizing, but it's, this whiskey for me is surprisingly palatable. It is. Agree? Yes. I love really punchy, high proof whiskeys. Like I want to drink it and I want it to hang out for a little bit. And this one does that. This one definitely sticks around for a while, but it's, it's not abrasive or overwhelming on my palate. It's a, it kind of evolves. The flavors kind of evolve as it sits on my palate a little longer. Yeah, I kind of like, you know, I, when it comes to appreciating whiskey, you know, for me, if I'm sitting down after a long day, um, or admittedly, if it's a weekend and it's a beautiful day and my taste buds are fresh at 10 a.m., <laughs> full taste, um, for me, I, I quite like the experience of, you know, nosing something, just taking note to myself, and sometimes it becomes subconscious, but observing, like, the aromas and the experience and kind of just trying to guess what's to come next. Right. Only to then taste it and get something completely unproductive. Yeah. That to me, like that, that little, like the two step process and maybe we'll get to the finish shortly. Um, it's something that I just going to appreciate. I don't know about you. Yeah. I think there are, there are some whiskeys where the, the nose and palate, you know, match and you know, you're happy about that, but I'm with you that when you know something and you're like, Oh, this is going to taste like a, B and C. And then it tastes like X, Y, and Z, you know, it's a big surprise when the nose and palate don't really match. Um, but it is exciting to kind of guess maybe what it is going to taste like. Yeah, and so you know, at this point, obviously having tasted neat, this kind of brings us to your point about adding water. And you know, growing up or, or just, just getting into whiskey for the first time, you always hear a few things, at least here in the United States, you hear a lot about age is, age is a good thing, age is better. We've learned that's not necessarily the case. Age is just one factor that goes into you know, the quality of whiskey. Um, but you also hear, you know, add a couple drops of water. And so I guess my tip, if anything in this, is you know, that doesn't really tell us the full picture. You know, adding a drop or two isn't necessarily going to make a difference or at least give us the experience. It can. Right. I think that what that point that we've always heard is missing is that, you know, whiskey's bottled at different strengths. And so when you have a cast drink whiskey at like 61%, Two to three drops might not necessarily do something. Um, so for me, I, I don't know. I, I like to do what's called the blink test. I, I can, and, I, and quite frankly, I don't necessarily want to take credit for it. I may have invented this, but I'm pretty sure that someone taught me this over okay. the last few years. But what I do is what's called the blink test. Basically, if you taste the whiskey neat, I'm going to do this right now. Okay, I'm going to do it with you. I know we're doing too much talking and not much uh, tasting, but okay. Well, I'm obviously exaggerating my blinking right now. Oh, but if you have to blink, generally that means the alcohol content is too high or the whiskey is too strong because at that point you can enjoy that. But if you're actually going with the objective of tasting the full flavor potential, you're focused more on the alcohol, less on the flavor. So what I do is I like to add a little bit of water. Okay. Um, uh, let's do this in this little picture. Add a little bit of water, go back to the whiskey, kind of note how the aroma has changed itself. And then taste it again. Ooh, and this brings up a lot more, a lot of more orchard fruit. No, that ginger has kind of gone away. Okay, getting distracted here. But back on the palate. See, for me, that little splash right there, oh, it's still a little hot. But that made it a bit more approachable. It cut down the bite, and I can really get into the flavors and you know, more mouth coating, if you will. That is nice. So, I mean, I had a, a tiny amount. And I just added three small drops of water, but it does open it up a bit and sorry, take down that, that initial burn. 
So yeah, that is actually, that is good with water. Yeah, I know I've, I've learned also that, you know, master distillers or master blenders will, you know, over in Scotland or, or here in the U.S. too, will, will go as far as really when they're tasting whiskey, identifying casks to, to put into a single malt, if you will, um, they'll, they'll water down to as low as like 30%. Oh, I, I was going to ask you about that. Um, I heard it was actually 20% that some go as low as 20%. And it's like, you think of that like 20%, what does that even taste like? Like watered? watery i don't know what that would taste like yeah Anybody out there knows what that tastes like or can chime in on that um please let us know which by the way i should i should tune in uh just a, a lot of comments that have come through we've been just getting way into this nosing and tasting this. <laughs> um whiskey wash good to see you drinking caveman thanks for tuning in wow we have a lot of comments flying in here richie z good to see you dram dude how are you um heather flanagan says i was able to do the tasting of all the july outturns in seattle Amazing. Nothing that wasn't interesting and tasty, but four is always a highlight for me. Okay. Heather, glad you enjoyed that event. Uh, we've heard feedback from a lot of members out in Seattle who said it was just an amazing time. And so you've tasted, I believe, at some of these, but not all of the order case tonight. Um, so we'll get to that shortly. So, okay. With that said, any, any final comments just on you know, how you observe whiskey or make a judgment or, or just you know, obviously, we, the finish is something we haven't really gotten into, but yeah. So, I mean, I've heard there there are tips and tricks that I have learned, I have been taught, you know, over time. Like uh, Ian Miller of Glen Siddick. Hi, Ian. <laughs> um, he, when I was in Scotland, he taught me. He told me that if you hold the glass in your hand like this and you warm it in your hand, that it will pull out different flavors. So. That is something that I thought was very interesting. And I find myself doing that, like when I'm at home on the couch or, you know, I'm just in a very casual setting, I will be holding my glass like this to warm the whiskey in my hand. And so that is something that he shared with me and that's his personal thing that he loves to do. Um, Simon Brooking of Lafroy said that when you nose whiskey, leave your mouth open a little bit um, to kind of pull in air that way you get different aromas on the nose if your mouth is open a little bit so that's something i try from time to time um i've heard people that plug a nostril and smell it with the, the right and then smell it with the left and so i just kind of take all of the advice that other people give and i try to implement that into my routine of nosing whiskey and i just kind of do what works or sticks for me and so this is definitely the warming in my hand has definitely stuck with me. Busting through right now, I can tell you it's working pretty well. It's personal. It's personal. Our, I mean, we have these tools. Our nose and palate are our own special tools, and they're going to be different. And nobody is going to know them better than you are. So just get to know them and and play around with different ways of nosing and tasting whiskey, and just do what's comfortable for you. Well, so what, okay, so with that, what, let's, let's just, I think this is the question that I think people, more people than not, um, are afraid. The most heated, I think, subject within whiskey appreciation, have, in my opinion, is the usage of ice. Do you drink your whiskey on ice or on the rocks, rather? Do you not? What's your opinion on ice in general? So I do. Um, not often. So here in LA, it's been ridiculously hot um the other day we were up to over 120 degrees it's like miserably hot and so my go-to on days like that is glenfetic 12 year on a big ice sphere and it is so delicious and refreshing and it is something that i genuinely love um but as far as putting ice on other whiskeys I typically like that's just my go-to when I'm hot. That's usually when I put ice in my whiskey is when it's just really hot and I want whiskey. <laughs> yeah. So according to Whiskey A Go Girl, as she just said, and I'll just repeat, cast 7.184 handbags and hookahs on ice is her go-to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just share. I I I feel like I don't know these with the the society whiskeys are are more, I don't know, I don't want to say more special, but they just hold a different place in my heart um, because I really love cask strength, single cask whiskeys. I love being able to sit with them and really dissect them on a, with my nose or palate. I, 
I love that about that. So I have not ventured to put these on ice yet. Are you recommending that I do that? <laughs> I, <was> just, <laughs> I can get some ice real quick. <laughs> I just thought I, I, you said something. I thought you said that. This <laughs> that, is, that is, I'm just, I'm being honest. That I'm, is the I, one whiskey I put on ice. <laughs> look, to your point, I, I think these whiskeys, you know, I'm just so lucky to be able to just enjoy them as I do. Um, you know, working for, it's just, it's really a dream to be able to experience these. Yeah. My preferred, you know, way, if I'm tasting whiskey, I, prefer to do it neat in a, in a nosy glass. Yeah. When it comes to these whiskeys, that's how I enjoy it most of the time. But, you know, to your point, yes, I think sometimes, and, and this is what I don't really agree with when people say you can't do a certain thing. You know, a lot, a lot of these rules of what you can't do. If I have a great, I'll, I'll have a, one of our casts and, and I'll just say, this is amazing, but I would love to experience it in a different light. Like I've had, you know, I, I, I brought one of our bottles to a bar and just handed it to this incredible mixologist. and. Again, it's it's rare that I do it that way, but like he just made the most unbelievable drink, you know, because it's such a unique spirit to begin with. It so, is. Uh, I would love to have one of these in a cocktail or in some other way. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to do that now that you've mentioned it. So let's let's if if you will. So guys, again, we're we're we'll trying to catch up on the comments here, but we have three really exciting whiskeys to go through. Um, we've each tasted these before. But I'm super stoked to, to revisit. All three are very different. Three of these were just released today, um, and some—I should say—a couple of these are actually close to selling out. So if you <laughs> pay attention to these tasting notes, and we're just going to give you an honest opinion. You know, we have a lot of whiskeys at the society every month. Um, I, we, we've chosen three that I think are just exceptionally unique. Um, we'll go through those. But if you have any questions, obviously about the whiskeys, comment below. Um, again, just to recap real quick, 7.184 handbags and hookahs is currently available. That's the whiskey we just started off with, Old Girl from Speyside. Beautiful whiskey, I think just a classic cask, if you will. Um, and Jenna said this is her go-to on a hot summer day. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, all right. You want it? Hey, you want to introduce the next one? I would love to. You, you can go for it. Yes, okay, so the first one is 76 point one three five moment of serenity it is a 15 year first fill hogs head finished so this is a finished whiskey um in x pedro jimenez cask it comes in it's a space side and comes in at 55.1 percent and i don't know if you can see it <laughs> But as far as the flavor profile on this, this falls within the spicy and sweet category, correct? Yeah, I think this one. So, and this, you know, what's interesting about this, just to break this down, we actually have 12 flavor profiles. Um, I know I mentioned that briefly, but we don't put the name of the distillery on the bottle, as some of you already know. But if you're first time and familiar with the society, we don't do that simply because we want the whiskey to do the talking. A lot of times we tend to prejudge a whiskey based on the label. So by removing the distillery, um, we are also removing the enthusiast or the whiskey drinkers prior experience with that distillery and any prejudgments. So this is actually categorized in, in our sweet, fruity, and mellow profile. Uh, oh, okay. The color coding here, and there, there are a couple different shades of, of this pink or lavender, if you will. Um, but that indicates the flavor profile here. Also on the website, all the information is available off the cask. But as Jenna mentioned earlier, this is a single cask whiskey, but it's actually lived its life in two different casks. So the first 14 years were in the American Elk X bourbon hogshead, typical, you know, bourbon wood. And then we transfer this for a final year into a first fill Taylor Jimenez sherry hogshead. That's actually American Oak hogshead as well, but seasoned with Taylor Jimenez sherry. So, you know, the, the two casks are going to add a second layer of depth and complexity as opposed to just one cask. Um, and this one I'm particularly excited because I love PX. So. Yeah, you actually got me into Sherry. I did? Yeah. So getting into Sherry and kind of understanding Sherry has really helped me understand whiskey um, on a whole nother level. And so it's nice to be able to kind of explore Sherry and then come back to whiskey and be able to pick up those notes. So this one definitely has those beautiful sherry notes. So cast number 76135, uh, Moment of Serenity. Do you want to do the honors of reading the official tasting notes on the bottle? Before I would love to. Okay. 
We were enjoying Serrano ham salad and orange cream cake on a sun-baked veranda. This whiskey previously inhabited an ex-bourbon hogshead. So as you guys are unfamiliar, these notes coming from our tasting panel. All of these whiskeys prior to bottling are blind taste tested and hand selected. Um, I always like these notes. I like to kind of debate them sometimes, just admittedly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll, I'll read the notes, I'll, be, I'll just think, wow, that's spot on for me, my personal palate. Other times I like to go a little bit, uh, anyway, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> right, let's do that right now. So what, what are you putting up on the nose? Just kind of starting with our approach. Dark uh, color. So, yeah, color is really beautiful on this. And I have to say, I just have to say one thing about the society real quick, um, because this bottle reminds me of this. So the beautiful thing about, well, one of the beautiful things about the society is that, you know, maybe you have a distillery that you're not crazy about, or one that you have their standard expressions, and they don't really blow you away. But the beauty about the society is that these are just really special, rare, single cask from these distilleries, and they surprise you. And they really kind of show you the heart of the distillery versus, you know, the standard commercialized, you know, offerings that you're going to get. So that is one of the things I really love is being able to dive into a distillery in a really special and more rare way than what you can typically typically get, you know, on a shelf somewhere. So that's just my little yeah, so I mean that's a that's a great point. I mean, I think we all have you know personal experience with the society, and you know, um, there's so much in it to appreciate. Okay, I, I, this is a shameless plug, of course, because obviously, but I you know I, I was a member before I, I was working for the company, and I just was so into just the diversity of of experiences to be had, and yeah. everything from the whiskey itself, of course, to just the approach of letting the flavor speak for itself. Um, but here's an important question: We have I'm just checking the comments as well. Question uh, from Whiskey Rover. Jenna, do you think drinking from your left hand enhances your sensory appreciation on the whiskey? I mean, I'm right-handed, so typically my glass is always in my right hand. Um, I No, I don't know. <laughs> That's a really good question, JJ. I'm not. That was a solid I'm, answer. Yeah, I, I will have to. to to do a study on that and and taste them from both hands and and come back to you with an answer. Yeah, a, a solid a solid answer to a, a question that may not have been fully sincere. However, that's good to know. So, more more info to come, whiskey rover. Um, so, a question from Richie Z: Are the sweet PX notes dominant in that bottle? Well, let's get into this whiskey. Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, so, on the nose, it the first time I I smelled it, it almost fooled me. It was a little bourbony, like a high proof bourbon. It kind of has that like cherry Jolly Ranchery kind of aroma about it. Um, but as I kind of sat with it and kept nosing it, you get tons of just like fig and dates and raisin. And I really do believe that those sherry notes are forward. Um, I even did a side by side comparison with sherry in a glass and this in a glass and went back and forth and they're there the notes are definitely there yeah and i think to that point so the, the sherry influence being one of the, the 15 years in total first full pattern in managed sherry px sherry is the sweetest type of sherry right and most of scotch whiskey that's matured in a sherry cast of some sort it's typically oloroso sherry but you have others fino montiato pattern menace and just name a few px is a different grape it's a different you know profile altogether for me it's more of those like black fruits very fruity, a bit of like caramelized sugars, if you will. Yeah. Um, but for me, this whiskey, you know, 15 years, it seems to have absorbed a lot of oak. It's a bit oaky and very spicy on the nose, but that the PX, the fruity character of the PX actually really rounds it out and adds another, <coughs> oh, just slipped on my chair here. Um, PX is breaking chairs. But um, for me, it's just that second level of fruitiness with the oak and spice. And it's really for a unique marriage, in my opinion. It doesn't, the nose to me isn't aggressively sweet as you would think a PX sherry would be. Um, I'm agreeing with you that it is very rounded. Yeah, so I think for me, like this one is very much 15 years. I think it's very drying on the, on the palate, which, which to me would suggest a whiskey with age. I would think this is probably about 20 years old. I mean, if I was doing this blind, really showing you know, its full age. You're making it, I can see you're making a face. That's it is. 
so good. <laughs> it is so, so it, it like af, after you swallowed it, it just coats your whole mouth. It's just like this slow coat of your entire palate. And it is so silky and velvety and it makes like it makes your mouth water like my mouth is watering after i drank that yeah i think it's it's fantastic the finish is really kind of medium in length but it's really become sweeter at the end um i'm enjoying this one neat i'm going to add a drop of water real quick and i want to be mindful of time and move on to the other two but for me i think this is very enjoyable just as is out of it, and so as i was talking about before and i'll be quick um but you kind of have that rolodex of memories or situations that you can kind of place a whiskey to and kind of pull flavors out. This is like almost leathery and like rich mahogany and leather bound books, not to get too Ron Burgundy, but it's, there is a, just a really beautiful, like leathery, just, I don't even know. I, I can't, I can't quite pin it, but it, it reminds me of growing up in in a barn and and riding horses and it's uh this this one evokes a lot of special memories for me <laughs> that's good i mean i think that's what's fun I mean, it's it's fun to pick a whiskey that's not the flavor profile is one thing that's important but also just you know what it means to you personally and what it represents i think is for me you know the, my favorite whiskeys are not the most necessarily on paper exceptional but they're just whiskeys that i find are fun or unique or remind me of something in my childhood Yes, I'm I'm with you. And I think that this this is one that I would if I could have this regularly and buy this regularly, I would. It is it's beautiful. So cast seventy six point one three five, moment of serenity. And you know, I'll just real quick one note, I did add a dash of water to it. The yeah, water did you pull out? Of the PX influence, much more fruity. Um, cuts down on a bit of that oakiness on, on the nose and the palate. Um, so I think it was really good approachable. I actually liked it with a little bit of water. I think that really came alive. So, okay. On to the next. On to the next. I'm excited about this one. So, fun <laughs> enough, Jen, Jen and I actually did a live stream on Instagram, <laughs> the first to taste this. And we were excited because we got this cast. This next cast, let's introduce it real quick, uh, 135.1. So, what does that mean? The point one suggests that that's actually the first cast we've ever bottled. From distillery number 135 and so the 135.2 the next cast we bottle from distillery 135 will be 135.2 but um with this one rather this is the first cast and we were super excited because we got this before the tasting and i know we wanted to open it so that it had some time to breathe before everybody else had it so we did an instagram live stream and we're just blown away so i'm excited to revisit this one yes it is uh, of the society bottles that I've had the pleasure of having. This is has taken the number one spot for me. Number one. Oh, you said that. You said that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one has just. I don't know. It's got its claws in me. Well, you you kick it off. You can talk about it. So I introduced it. Sixteen years old. Um, that's all I'm going to say. You can do the right. Okay. So it is a sixteen-year Highland. Uh, first fill hogshead finished in X Sauternes cask. Um, so Sauternes is a super, super sweet French wine from Bordeaux. Um, and typically with Sauternes, you get notes of like apricot and butterscotch and like ginger, marmalade, um, some of those like lighter stone fruits. Uh, those are typically flavors you get with that type of wine. So I was interested to see if I was going to get any of those flavors in the whiskey. Um, so yeah, you want to get into it? Yeah. So side note, um, if anyone's into football, upper slash the same thing, uh, France just won their semifinal match. Uh, they did win. The final. So as a little toast, we have not only <laughs> and they're also, I believe, the number one consumer of Scotch whiskey. So. They are. And Quite a marriage between two amazing <laughs> and France. You were just in France recently, weren't you? Yes, um, we go, we go, we've been going for the past couple of years. Um, the Whiskey Fairy does a big tattoo convention out there. And so we go out and kind of explore Paris. It's beautiful, I love it there. All right, we're totally about to talk about your travels and I want to talk about more, but <laughs> this whiskey. So again, we're just recognizing the French influence on, um, 
what is Jenna's favorite society whiskey to, to, to start? No. I think that this has kind of like the quintessential whiskey color. Yeah. The color of this is so beautiful. It is that kind of deep amber, just it's like the perfect color. Reminds me of Jurassic Park in the first film when they had that, you know, mosquito trapped in like that. Yes, and is yeah. amber, right? Was that amber? Yeah. What is it? What? what is what was it trapped in? A tree sap, right? A, oh, tree. It was sap. Okay, yes. Yeah. It's like the exact same color because like, as a kid, I had a replica of that. That's like, so funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, reminds me of Jurassic Park. <laughs> but really on the nose, I think that, okay, getting the whiskey itself, it, this is just incredible. It really draws you in the depth of it, you know, right away. It really wants, it invites you to really just jump into the glass. It just layer upon layer uh, of that sauterne, that sweetness on the nose. That's so the bourbon, amazing. The bourbon notes are secondary to those really sweet sauterne notes. Yeah. Do you still get them? Are you still finding them behind the sweetness? Yeah, I mean, I think this whiskey and the whiskey before are both double matured whiskeys. I think the first one, it was the original, the American Oak, and it's bourbon cast that did the talking first, and then the Pedro Jimenez Sherry came out. Yeah. But this one, I get the saw turn right on the nose. Right off the bat, yeah. It's very sweet, very very rich and luxurious, if you will. Um, but it's, it's, playful. it's like a playful, luxurious whiskey. Yes. There is a, a crispness to it, almost like a like a when you cut like an apple and you get that really crisp cut in an apple or pear. Yeah, I get like a like a musty old like like a cheese like cheese like a white cheese. Oh man, but more ginger on this one. And some like some orange peel, not orange peel. It's more like a tangerine. Not to get too into it, but. It's like a dried, dried orange peel that's just been vaporized. Oh, but it's beautiful. It is. The palate's even better. Mm. It's like honey. It's like when you eat a spoonful of honey, it just. See, I get more of that cheese. I get more of that. It's funny, we get different things. I get more of that cheese on the palate. Oh. Oh, no, there is, there is like a blue cheese almost note to this. And the first time I had it, that is what stuck with me. And I think that's why I loved it so much because it's so unique. It is such a unique flavor profile to find in, you know, something that you think is gonna be overly sweet to have that kind of savory cheese note in there, like a musty, not in a bad way. It's beautiful. That's funny, I'm reading the, the label on the bottle here. It says, it starts with amazing color, indulgent scent. Like that's exactly what you said first. Incredible color, amazing color. Um, wow, yeah, so beautiful. I think the palette is, is just, it's a stunner. It's a stunner whiskey right now, but I think that the bad news is, and I want to look it up just to make sure, because it was released today and people saw this one. <laughs> Recognize the uniqueness of this. Go you know, get it, I promise you. And if you don't like it, you can send it to me and I will take care of it for you. <laughs> uh, left, cast number 135.1, sens sensual sensory sensation. Uh, Southern Highland whiskey in this sweet, pretty mellow profile. 16 years of finishing. Beautiful. Do you, do you find it overly sweet on the palate? I don't. I, I think, don't either. I think the first time we tasted it, I thought, wow, this is so sweet. But right now, kind of going in sequence with these others, it's really not. It's really well balanced for me. It is. It is incredibly well balanced. I You get like a hint of that sweetness. You get kind of like a silky butterscotchy note that kind of just coats your whole tongue but then it kind of comes down to the sides of your mouth and it becomes like that savory, cheesy note. <laughs> and this one, I'm gonna just drink this neat. I, 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 I did not add water to this because it is so perfect <laughs> the way it is. It is so unique. I, I don't know another word for it. It's just, it's not like anything I've ever had before. And it just really sticks to your palate and it evolves the longer it's in there and it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, for me, one of the best soft turn finisher or, or yes. whiskey I've ever had in my life. Yes, I'm with you. I mean, execution is just spot on. And obviously, coming from me, it sounds like I might be biased, but I think the whiskey will do the talking itself. There are eight left. Um, I know a lot of you actually ordered one today. If you haven't, there are a few left. Pick it up. Do not sleep on this. 
Oh, we'll chat about yeah, we'll chat about it later. I think I think we, we can stop talking about this. <laughs> not my favorite or anything. I'll just Let's, set it to the side. <laughs> since we have left and we're talking about perfection. Let's get to the next one because I think this is pretty close. Want to introduce the last one? Go for it. No, you you go for it. Oh, me. Okay. So this is from my favorite region of Scotland when it comes to whiskey. Um, it is an 18 year refill Oloroso butt from Isla. It um, is called Seaside Surprise. It is 29.226. Don't know if you can see it. Um, it sits at 56.8%. And this actually, this distillery, you guys have bottled quite a few bottles from them. This is, or I'm sorry, cask from them. This is cask number 226. Yeah, we try to do um, a bottling from, or a cask rather, from the Cellar 29 once a month. Sometimes there have been more than once a month for, for other special releases. But and we always try to stick, typically the, the casks that we're looking for from the distillery are different, I think, from what the, most of the region is putting out in terms of commercial bottlings. It's a bit older. We look for around 17 to 22 years on average, you know, mm -hmm. something within that range. This is right in the core. It's an 18-year-old. But... Being that it's refill, excuse me, being that it's matured in a refill Oloroso Sherry butt is a bit unique. Typically, you'll see these in, in uh, American Oak Experiment Hogsheads. And a couple months ago, as, as many of you know, uh, we had cast 29.224, which is actually named Best Whiskey in the World at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. And, you know, that's undoubtedly an incredible whiskey. But what I think was when we won the award, it was a great day, obviously. But I was excited just because it's very typical of what we try to bottle every single month. This is a different whiskey, different cast type, but same age, same distillery. Um, I don't think it's any less exceptional at all. In fact, I think this whiskey right here is a flavor profile that I really gravitate towards. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> so bottled at 56.8%, which is actually relatively high for, I think, a whiskey this age from this region. Given the it is. That's a good point. Uh, do you want to kind of cut into it? We, we had a yeah, so on the nose, I get, the first thing I got initially was like a sweet rubber almost, but it's not off-putting. I think if you know, you know, Isla whiskeys, they, they kind of tend to have this, it's just a very different profile that you're going to get on the nose versus a Speyside or a Highland or um, anything else that is so unique in its own way. Um, and then as so I did this with my mouth open when I was nosing it. And I was just kind of like inhale, like breathing in through my nose and then exhaling through my mouth into the glass. And it really cuts down on that initial peat that you get. And so you can kind of dig into the other aromas that are there. Um, it's there. The sherry is there. It almost borderline is grapey as I was just continuously nosing it. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. it is, I, I have nothing to say. It's just, it's just too, it, it is. I mean, I, I don't think words do justice for this whiskey. Um, I think if you like the, if you're like the Isla style, if you like, if you like that combination of, of, of peated whiskey and, and sherry or any sort of wine influence, for a lot of people, I think it's like a sensory overload. I like a lot going on in the glass. Yeah. I, I think this is, um, yeah, you know, I had high expectations for this one months ago when I saw it was coming out. I, I circled it on a list, and I was like, "This could be great, or it could be really disappointing, or it could be a letdown." It, it's exceeded my expectations. Um, uh, it's I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of a, uh, lost <laughs> words right now at how remarkable this is, and it's uh, it's beautiful. And I think you know, I always see kind of get that rap that it's too much for people, and. For me personally, like Isla whiskeys in the beginning, it was way too much for me. And it took me a long time to really appreciate what they have to offer. But now that it's something that I gravitate towards, this is like something that I will reach for, you know, any time of the day, it is truly a stunner of a whiskey. So, okay. So, wow. I need to kind of go and have a moment with that whiskey in myself <laughs> in private. <laughs> but, um, uh, kidding, not really kidding, but 
So real quick, I want to just to wrap up, I want to run through just the whiskeys. I know a lot of people are asking about the prices. I want to just do a real quick run through. We started with Cask 7.184. Um, and I just I'm checking actually right now because I know we released some of these today and and the availability is limited, obviously, in everything we release, and, and some are going relatively quickly. So 7.184 is $125 before shipping and tax. Uh, available, of course, only to society members. Um, where's the next one? Oh, I put it down here. Cast number 76.135, Moment of Serenity, is 145. And then we went to Jenna's favorite society whiskey of all time. Yeah. Right up there with mine as well. As well. Um, I do enjoy French Oak. Um, is cast 135.1, the first cast from the distillery 135, Sensual Sensory Sensation. That is a tongue twister. This is priced at 150, and there were eight left about 30 minutes ago. So be quick. Go get one. <laughs> and then last one, 29.226. The, oh, just this glory. <laughs> and Sherry. It's, it's special. Yeah, priced at $215 for that one. So a really, a real stunner. Um, anyway, I, I want to be mindful of time. I want, you know, first of all, everybody, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah. Message below. Uh, if you have any further questions or comment, you know, after we'll repost this YouTube video, just we'll make sure to comment and respond to everybody uh, there as well. So thank you all for tuning in. Jenna, thank you for, for Thank you for having me. And thank you everyone for coming to hang out and talk whiskey with us. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or send me an email. I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, and, and of course, just to kind of conclude, most importantly, you know, I know a lot of your society members, and it's great to see you guys back. We're going to be doing more of these every month. We'll be debuting new whiskeys and really tackling a topic. This topic was about appreciating whiskey, um, offering kind of just tips and tricks of, of nosing and tasting. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of other topics. So if you have any other ideas and you have any questions about whiskey itself, you can just shoot us a comment below, uh, and we'd love to, to take note of that. So. For those of you who are not members, you know, obviously your opinion matters as well, but we'd love to see you join the society. Uh, we're here obviously to really guide you along this journey of, of exploring different whiskeys. Um, so as I noticed some people are commenting, $99 is the base membership price. We also have a great bottle bundle deal for first time members for 150. Uh, in addition to your annual membership, we also give you a pretty amazing bottle as well at a great discount. So. Um, comment below, just shoot me an email if you'd like. Email is ben at smwsa. You can also find us on Instagram. I'm single malt alliance. And Jenna is? Uh, whiskey go girl. And it's whiskey spelled correctly without the E. Correct. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again. We're going to sign up for now. Jenna, thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.